that? You're funny. Huh? Look here. Have a great day. That's right. Well, here we are at Appalachian Tra Trailers. <coughs> Kevin's going to set us up. All right, well, here we are at Appalachian Trail. Now, how do I say that? Appalachian or Appalachian? We say Appalachian. I've heard it both ways. Either one's fine. Okay. Um, we've been here at this location since 2003. So we only sell our trailers from the Ohio location uh, in Salem, Ohio. And okay. the location here in Mannheim. We sell the same price at both locations. So they don't upcharge for shipping or anything. It's it's like factory direct, paying the same price. Great, great. And uh, that's where they build all of our, our open trailers. Now you're located here, in th this is Pennsylvania. Yep. What part of Pennsylvania is this now? So Mannheim, um, we're, we're close to Lancaster County. Okay. We're actually in Lebanon County, but it's not far from Lancaster, right down the road from Hershey. Gotcha. Um, so kind of a good- You're right location. off the main highway here yep, too. Yeah, we're right off Route 72. Um, I mean, the turnpike exits only I mean, nine tenths of a mile down the road. So good, easy great. access, yep. great to get to. Can you take your trailers on the highway on the uh, um, yeah. yeah so, the turnpike? Yep. Um, so most of our tires, they have the speed ratings on them. They are rated at seventy mile an hour. Um, okay. And usually with your with your trailer tags, they'll they'll scan those the same as scanning your plates on the trucks. Now it's going to cost you about double. Okay. Uh, taking a taking a trailer along with the vehicle. Okay. That's important to know if you're heading back home for yep. along 76, right? Yep. I've, I've warned a couple people and told them a different route if they wanted to avoid the extra tolls. Yeah, we're going back. We're in York County. Oh, okay. So yep. we're going back to back roads yep. <laughs> to get there because we didn't want to do that. Yeah, okay. it gets kind of pricey. Let's take a look at the, at the right. trailer. Yep. Our 10,000 GVWR contractor grade dump trailer. This okay. would probably be our most popular model of our it is. trailer. Okay. So this one we did get with the optional tarp kit and spare tire. So those are additions. Um, we sell just kind of the, the you know the base trailer without okay. any of those options, and you can add those if you if you decide to order it. Great. So we have our, our pump and battery. Um, it comes with a deep cycle marine battery that is set up to charge off the towing vehicle. Okay. So as long as the hot's working on the plug on your truck, it's charging that battery while you're going down the road. Okay. Now if Great. if it's going to sit a lot, you know if you're not using it regularly, it's going to sit. I just had a guy earlier, you know he. He lets it sit three months at a time at times. It's a good idea to put a, a trickle charger or something. Gotcha. On there. Okay. And the magic it happens. Now I see that's a dual piston. Yep. So we do dual cylinders okay. um, on all of these trailers. We do now have a model that does offer a scissor dump on one of our 15,000 GWR models. Okay. But all of our other trailers have dual cylinders. Even our small 8,000 pound dump trailer, we still do dual cylinders on those. The reason for that, it's more stable. If you're dumping and your load shifts or something, yeah. you're not going to twist your, your frame and your, and your okay. bed. So. Yeah, and that, in firewood, that yeah. doesn't, doesn't shift that much. But yeah. it's a, you're doing Danny's job because that's what he does. Well, that's the best part. That's right. So these are power up and then gravity down. Uh, we do have a safety bar to prop these up. If you had to get underneath the bed for anything, you do want to have these bars propped up. And that's the safety bar there. Yeah. You can also see your ramps. You get a good view of the ramps here that are stored underneath the trailer. Those are the ramps there. Yeah, yep. They'll slide out the back. We'll take a look at that then. Okay. If they're just stored underneath. Uh, this, the contractor grade model comes standard with the equipment ramps that slide Great. out the back. Okay. Well, you know what the PSI is on that? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, to be honest with you. Um, I believe these are adjustable, so we actually, this does actually have the same pump in it as our 15,000 GVW. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is, um, this is uh, painted on, yes. right? Okay. Yeah. So, these are primer and then acrylic enamel with hardener. Um, we, don't, we don't use powder coat currently. There's pros and cons to both. What yeah. I've seen a lot with the powder coating is when it starts to come off, it comes off in sheets. Yeah, okay. So that's at least the nice thing with paint. You can touch it up. You can, you know, maintain a little bit better than powder coat. It tends to hold up better kind of in the long run yeah. uh, than powder coat. I was a painting contractor, so okay. I'm, all I'm all behind that. Yep. <laughs> so this has our combo tailgate. So it has the barn doors here in the back. So if you're dumping 
you know, firewood, whatever. Yep. Um, you have a chain here to hook on the side. There's a catch there here by the fender, so your door just swings around here. It hooks in to hold your doors open when you dump, so you don't bend your door. Okay. Gotcha. Just like that. Cool. And it, look, good coffee cup holders. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. Just don't forget they're sitting there. It's not. I can't. I can't guarantee it's going to stay on there when you. Okay. Head when out. we head out. Yeah. <laughs> and these are uh, some tie downs. You got on the side here. Yeah, so what nicely welded. All the way around. Um, that's kind of for strapping down your tarp kit. Um, so gotcha. like this tarp kit, you know, you can you can bungee down all the way around. You can, um, okay. So it's got grommets down. on the. Yeah. Okay. This does have heavy tie downs in the bed for for hauling the equipment. So you do have four D rings that come standard in it. Okay. For if you're hauling. Just out of curiosity. Yeah. Why are they put on the floor rather than on the side? It's it's stronger. Um, they weld them over a cross member. So it's it's just stronger being on the floor on that C channel cross member versus on a wall where it's just like a box tubing upright. Yeah. Okay. Because I've seen other competitors have it on the side. Yeah. You know, and a I've, popular. I've had people order them that way. Um, you know, that's that's something that you know I've I've had them custom custom build them that okay. way for somebody before. I don't necessarily recommend it personally. Okay. Um, I prefer them on the floor being right over that, that C channel cross. Okay. Number. Your ramp lip in the back here goes all the way across. So this is your ramp lift. So you can oh, really? Ramps. That's this is the ramp lip here. Yep. Yep. So Look you can set that. your ramps whatever width you need depending on what you're hauling. Okay. So these cool. just slide out the back. Cool. So. See another reason why I video this so I can remember what you tell me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they just slide That's out cool. the back. Like I said, whatever width you need for what you're hauling. If you are hauling a heavy machine, we do yeah. recommend blocking the rear of the trailer. Okay. That'd be the same as, as on any of other equipment trailers where we have slide out ramps. It's good to support the back of the trailer so you don't pick up on either the bed so get or a jack on the truck. Or something yeah. up underneath there. Yeah, a jack, some blocks, something okay. like that. Just you know, that way you don't potentially pick up on the bed or on or on the truck. I've had guys gotcha. actually lift the back end of their trucks off the ground. Okay. Yeah. So and this it's being stored underneath, you're not having to carry your ramps, you know, you just lift them on there, lift them off. Okay. How is that head? Oh, okay. So you got a pin in there. Yep, you have a pin here, and a cotter key here. Okay. Gotcha. And then the uh this has the spread gate as well. Spread gate. Yeah, so you wanted to tailgate a load of stone or something? Yeah. You set your chain here on both sides. This is your adjustment for how much you want it to open at the bottom. Okay. You have that on both sides. You release this on the driver's side here for that, and this will release both sides. And depending on how much you have this chain set, it'll swing out here at the bottom. Okay, cool. <laughs> we almost have an immediate need for that. Oh, okay. Well, which good. is perfect. Yep. So, okay. Gotcha. And then you have your gussets here as well on the side. So this has the standard two foot sides. Which gotcha. Has a gusset there that you can add a board. Yeah, which we are doing. Yeah, we do also offer. I mean, if you special order one, you can get higher sides as well. You can order one with four foot sides. sides. Yeah, they'll go up. Okay. Uh, they'll go up to forty five inches. Will be the highest. The forty five okay. inch side model won't have the gussets. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, you're dealing with top heaviness then. Yeah. If you do so. Yep. And I would assume a lot of the guys that do dumpster yeah. stuff is what that's yep. particular. Yeah, it, it's it's fine if they're hauling lighter materials, but you know, you get in if you try and fill it with gravel or dirt even with high yeah. stuff like that, you'll overload it pretty fast. Yeah. This does have the ten ply radial tires. Okay. And the LED lights and sealed wiring harness. That comes standard on our contractor grade model. So that sealed wiring harness is kind of key because it actually is a pre-assembled harness that we get. Okay. That um, is actually using the ground and the hot from the truck to each of the lights. So rather okay. than having a ground at each light and getting your ground off the frame, it's gotcha. grounding through the truck. So it's a more reliable system. Okay. Cool. I noticed your uh, welds. Yeah. Along or full length welds. Yeah. Inside the bed. You, inside the, all the way around, uh, across your seams. Okay. And this is this is eleven gauge floor. Uh, eleven gauge floor. Be standard. Okay. You can order a heavier floor. A ten or three sixteenths, which okay. is actually more like a seven gauge. Okay. Oh that, really? It adds a lot of weight. Um, so depending on the use, you know, some guys will want that, but most of the time we're doing the <coughs> eleven gauge. Floor. Okay. Gotcha. And you have Zerk fittings here. Yep. Yeah. So you have greasable hinges on the tailgate. 
Um, there are also grease hinges, top and bottom on your cylinder. Which is? On this, on, on the cylinders underneath. Underneath, there. okay. Yeah, so you have top and bottom where the bolt goes through so, that holds the cylinder. And that's down. where that safety bar comes into play. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> to get down there to do that. Yeah. You How often do you normally it. suggest um, uh, greasing those? I mean, honestly, obviously these are. Oh. Honestly, it's as needed. You know, every few months or something like that. Okay. It's you know, it's just you just want to have a little grease in there so it doesn't wear out as quickly. Gotcha. The bigger thing to keep an eye on would be your like your bearings. Okay. So those are those the are wheel useful. bearings. Yeah. Okay. So those um, always check the, the axle booklet so you'll you'll have the axle information uh, when you do all your paperwork. Gotcha. We'll give you copy of that. But what they're currently recommend on those is once a year or thirty six thousand miles. Okay. For most people, that's once a year. Okay. But uh, that's what they recommend for regrease in the uh, the bearings. They recommend taking them apart, repacking them by hand, okay. assembling them. They do have, these are the easy lube axles. They are, okay. So there is a grease fitting behind your rubber stopper here. Okay. If you if you were to use that to re-grease them, yeah. you need to do it in warm weather because if you push cold or stiff grease in there, you can actually push that seal out in the back. Okay. That's, gotcha. that's the danger, and that's why they recommend redoing them by hand where you actually take the bearings out, repack them, okay. put them back in. To avoid that. Gotcha. So if you choose to do it that way, you just want to do it when it's warm. And if you're not handy, you got to have a mechanic do that. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's always the option too. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Because I mean, in Pennsylvania, um, trailers with brakes are required to have an annual inspection. So you know, if you chose to, you could have you know. So this has to have an annual inspection. Yep. In Pennsylvania, any with brakes, they have to have an annual inspection. Okay. Um, so that's something they could do. You know. I have another trailer, which is a single axle. Yeah. Trailer and uh, that has brakes on it, but I I was told I didn't have to get an annual inspection on that. I'm, I'm not sure on that. Um, my understanding was if it's had. I'm not contra being a contrarian to them. Yeah, yeah. I, um, our single axles don't have brakes unless you add that as an option. Okay. Some other states require that. Gotcha. But uh, I, I think if it has brakes, technically it's supposed to be inspected. Okay. But there again, you have to check. It might it might be by GBW. Okay. I try not to get too much into the, so the, the legal part of all yeah, that. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's good just to keep the consumer aware of, yep. of that. So. Yep. Okay. Man, look at that. I've got Appalachian. Appalachian. <laughs> yep. Whatever. I heard I heard that if you live in West Virginia it's Appalachian. Sounds that sounds about right. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anything else I need to know about this? I think that's pretty much it. I mean we went over we went over pretty much everything unless you have any other questions for me. No, I don't. I just want to get to the paperwork, I guess. All right. To do that. Oh the other thing, yeah. uh, on these you gotta have a, a break. Yeah, so you do have to have an electric brake controller in brake the control. vehicle to operate the brakes on the trailer. Yeah, yep. I just got that installed. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yep. Yeah, that's something I usually I'm usually checking when I hook guys up if they have one. We make sure the brakes and everything okay. come on. And it's there again. It's something I check because a lot of people, if they haven't towed one before, even if they towed a trailer but haven't towed one with electric yeah. brakes, some trucks will say they have a tow haul mode. That's not the brake controller. That's, that's for the transmission. That's your transmission, yeah, yeah. So you have to make sure you actually have an electric brake controller gotcha. to operate. Because you do need to be able to adjust that as well. Okay. Because you can adjust the gain depending on how hard you want those brakes gotcha. to come on. Gotcha. I just, it's new. I had another vehicle before that had a uh, brake adjuster in it. And we when we we hauled the other little trailer. Okay. We were using that. Yeah. And we had adjusted. But this one, I have no idea how to adjust it. Okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Before we'll, we'll we leave. Over, yeah. When we when we hook you up, we'll go over all that because we want to make sure the brakes are working. We'll check all the lights and everything. Okay. We'll that with you. So. Cool. Great. Right. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah. All right. Now, I know you don't get involved in tow vehicles and all that. Um, and all that. But what would you recommend in terms of a tow vehicle? Or does uh, that, you, you stay away from that. Yeah. I mean, I, I always... I always ask the customer, you know, check and see what your vehicle is rated to tow. Okay. So, you know, find out from the manufacturer. Fortunately, they don't make it as simple as just putting it on the sticker on the truck. Yeah. For what the actual towing capacity is. But you can usually look it up, even online, if you look up your exact gear model and okay. everything. You can find out what it's rated to tow. So no. that's that's what I always tell a customer. Make sure, you know, you're the manufacturer of the vehicle. Is rated now I have a 1500 Ram 1500. Yeah. Um, my concern is I'm just pushing the limit with this, and I, I wouldn't I'm go any bigger. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure because it, it can vary so much year to year. Okay. They change what they rate them for. Okay. Um, you definitely would be the only person towing one of these with that truck. Yeah, I understand that. That's what I always tell people: double check and see see what the manufacturer recommends. I was told not to go bit any bigger than this. Probably um, not. Probably, for, probably for this, not. if I went to a 14 yeah. foot. Now this is a 12 foot, right? Yeah. Okay, so. so that actually on a dump trailer that actually makes a big difference. Yeah. Going from a 12 to a 14. The reason being on a dump trailer your axles are all the way back in order to be able to dump. 
Gotcha. So unlike some of our other trailers, like an equipment trailer, a car trailer, a landscape trailer, if you were to add two feet to this trailer, it all goes in the front. Gotcha. Oh, yeah, okay. On the other trailers, the axles are adjusted accordingly. Okay. So what that means is if you go to a 14 foot over 12, you add quite a bit of tongue weight. Okay. And that's, that is one of the things to consider with a towing vehicle is the tongue weight rating. Yeah. Because while you might be fine towing the gross vehicle weight, like the 10,000 pounds, if you have more tongue weight, that's where you're going to kind of notice that the truck might be more limited. Okay. Gotcha. Good. And uh, I noticed somebody said something. Now, these are six lug. Yeah. What's the difference between a six and an eight? Um, so these are these are 5.2K axles, okay. which come in a six lug. The ones that we would go to after that would be a 6K axle. Okay. Those are an eight lug. Okay. And as are our 7K axles. So it has to do with the weight distribution yep. okay yep gotcha. these actually these do have the same size brakes so it's a standard 12 2 brake which okay. is the same as you have on a 6k or a 7k axle they okay use a lot of the same components across okay sizes okay. gotcha all right thanks man Alrighty. yep yeah let's get her uh tagged up well i can't get her tagged up i gotta go <laughs> down the street what's that okay. what mommy says hi yeah oh she does yeah well, that's awesome all right <laughs> have a great day